Okay, so continuing with tic-tac-toe, I've got my game board drawn, and I've taken a bit of care to get some extra comments in here to find, uh, you know, to keep myself organized. This is going to get pretty confusing, so you should really maybe try to do a similar thing. And they're all turned on right now. So this is the middle row. And, you know, all I did was go through and modify all the coordinates and update it so that they were all drawing in the right place. I don't think I um, modified all my comments, but, uh, oops. But I gotta say, if you find yourself going through a process like this where you're um, repeating code and copying and pasting code, it's almost always a sign that you should be doing something a little different, differently. And I, you know, I want to keep this straightforward since for, I know for many of my students, this is really a kind of an introduction to programming. So um, I'm a little uh, torn. We, you know, we really should use a function at this point to draw these game pieces and because of all the repeated code here, and you know, make it able to draw any position on the game board. But for simplicity's sake, and to just really understand the basics of uh, making the game work and processing, I'm going to leave it like this, kind of all stuck in the draw loop. And uh, hopefully, that doesn't get in itself confusing because there's so much code. But just know that there'll be another video on how to kind of take functions and make this work in a much cleaner way um, and you should definitely look at that but we'll continue like this and I hinted at what was going to happen uh, we we should we, we want to manage you know obviously this isn't a legal game this isn't going to happen in a real game of tic-tac-toe every space is occupied with both X and O but everything's turned on essentially I haven't done anything in my code to make these not draw these positions and uh, so it's a nice test to see everything working but how am I going to go to the next step to control whether or not this top left corner is an X or O or the middle box is an X or O obviously we need something to keep state so keep track of when someone says uh, keeping state what they mean is you know, something that keeps track of whether that thing is on or off, or you know any other aspect of uh, its its properties, whether it's positioned somewhere or colored somewhere, has a certain score, has a certain amount of health. All of these things are examples of the state of something. So we're talking about the state of each box, this top left box. What is its current state? Is it empty? Is it X? Is it O? So. In order to keep state, we use variables. This variable in uh, Python here is simply uh, going to be storing either a 0 for empty, a 1 for, um, and I can never remember who goes first in X's and O's, and I think I did it O last time. We'll make it a, an X, and 2 is an O. So this is just to remind us what we're, what the plan is. And this, so this variable is uh, going to be assigned one of these three values. It's going to be an integer. And this, this statement here is an assignment statement. So um, I'm, you know, talking about this because I don't think we've really, we haven't had a chance to deal with this in class. Uh, normally at this point we would have dealt with it, but things are a little different this time around. So this is an assignment variable. Uh, it's one equal sign. It just simply means... Um, store whatever this value is here. This is called a value. And in this case, it's the number 2. No decimal place, just like the number 2. And that value is stored under the name top underscore left. Now, it's really important. A couple things are important. First, you have to make a legal variable name. So I did not call it top left like that because that actually doesn't work. You have to have a single kind of word, no spaces in it. And it just looks 
to my eyes a little better to have that underscore in there because it makes it more easily, it makes it more readable. Um, variable names can also contain a number in there and uh, they have to, you know, and they, they typically are lowercase. So we use uppercase for in programming for other things that we haven't dealt with yet. So no spaces, maybe just keep it to letters under, and lowercase letters for the variable name. This on the right, the value 2, we really have to constantly think about not just values, but what kind of thing is the value. So this number 2 is, you know, if, if, when we you know talk about these things in math class, this would be a counting number, an integer, because it has no decimal portion. And it's really important to remember that it's an integer uh, in a programming language because integers are capable of, of certain things. Obviously, they're capable of doing all sorts of math and calculations. Um, and, uh, you know, other examples of information stored in the computer are capable of other things. Like, for instance, a number like this would be a floating point number, a float. So if we had a calculation with pi, we would be talking about a float. Or maybe we have some kind of message we're building, uh, some kind of messaging system, and we have something like this. This, in quotes, this value here is called a string. We'll talk about those more later, but they just for comparison, not everything is going to be an integer in our values, but for this game, it probably uh, we probably just need to work with integers, at least for the time being. Okay, so assignment. One equals sign assigns integer value 2 to the name top left. Why are we doing this? We're trying to keep state. We're trying to figure out what is the state of the top left corner. Is Did anyone play here? Let's make it empty to start because that's what it does in the game. I did this in the last video. So if it's, well, let's see, I said if it's a 1, it's going to be an x. So that is backwards from what I said before. Um, it's okay, I can leave it that way. So that means if it's a 2, it's an ellipse. Now, you'll notice something about this. This, and I'll say if it's a 1, it's a x. That's what I, my little guide up there said. Why am I typing two equal signs here? I think that might be the first thing that you might notice. Um, so we'll talk about that in a moment. We're, what we're doing is we're creating a conditional statement or an if statement, and we're just checking to see if the value stored in a variable is, you know, of a certain value. We know that a two means that we want to draw a circle here. So we're checking to see if this value of integer 2 is what's currently being stored in the variable top left. So the way the if statements work is the keyword if. You can see that's kind of in a different color there. So that kind of tells us this is a, 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 a keyword in the Python programming language. This is a kind of keyword in the processing kind of graphics library. Um, so if and then a condition. This whole thing here is called a condition. And it basically says, hey, is the thing on the left equal to the thing on the right? That's what two equal signs means. It's testing for equality. Is this thing, is this the same as that? Okay, we had to we had to use something different from one equal sign because one equal sign already means assignment. It means store the value in on the right in the name on the left. Whereas here, we're checking to see if they're the same. We're checking for equality. And so this ellipse, which is now indented, all the code that appears under if statement that is going to run when this is true needs to be indented. So if you want to indent something, you can highlight it like multiple lines. And you can use your tab key. So tab shifts it to the right. And holding down the shift key and pressing tab will move it to the left. Okay, so so let's see what we've got here. Hopefully no errors. Nothing's being drawn here. 
You should have kind of predicted that. It's always good to think about it first. If top left is 0, what's going to happen down here? Well, this, top left equal to 2? No, it's 0 currently. So an if statement only runs the code when the condition is true. This is currently not true because it's not actually set to 2. So it doesn't run this code. Skips it. Goes to the next line that is not indented, which is the next if statement. Checks to see if it's 1. It's not 1. It's 0. This is also false. So it doesn't run this code either. All right. So we won't see an ellipse in top left. And we also won't see the x. And that's exactly right. That's what's happening. There's nothing there. Okay, so we'll change it to a 1. Now, if it's a 1, if we look at our code, then this should be true. So this should draw the top left x. And, of course, that's what it's done here. And finally, if it's a 2, we should end up with the ellipse. So these, these, this is a basic if statement, a conditional statement. It checks the condition here. If it's true, it does what's in here. You can, let me just continue with just talking about if statements for a moment that won't make sense for tic-tac-toe. So it doesn't necessarily, this isn't what we would do in tic-tac-toe normally, but I would like to just talk about something for a moment. There's something called else. And an else statement says, hey, if this is true, uh, do the code that's immediately indented underneath. So if top left is 2, we're going to get an ellipse. Now if top left is not 2, all right, then the else statement kicks in. in. In other words, if this is false, if it's not true, it's false. And if it's false, it runs the code under the else statement. Okay, so I've commented out this. I'm just going to delete this for a moment. So it, it, it runs what's here. So if it's a 2, it draws a 0. Not 2 draws an x. It's currently 2. I expect a 0. Okay. Let's change it to 1. If it's a 1, it draws an x. You might say, this looks good. This is working. Right? It's not. But it's just, I'm trying to talk about an else statement. It's not working because... Well, you know, when we do testing, we have to test every everything, every value. What if it's a zero? Zero is supposed to be empty. Well, we get an x. And why do we get an x? Well, it wasn't equal to top left equals, this was not true. So that means this code runs, which is the draw an x code. But that's just to illustrate that if statements can also work with else statements. And the reason I did that is just because... I'll go back to what I had here. I had an if statement where it said, OK, check if it's a 1. This worked fine. This worked fine, but you know, I want to kind of do one last thing to talk about if statements just to see it working. And I want to use, I want to, I want to point out something. Top left is a value. And it can't be any, you know, it is just a single value. It's an integer, and an integer can't be, it sounds silly, but it can't be a 2 and a 1 and a 0. It can't be multiple values at the same time. That's kind of obvious, but if it's a 2, it can't be a 1. And so why I'm bothering to say this is because what we really want to say here is, okay, Let's just check our options. First, we'll check if it's a 2. If it's a 2, then we're going to draw this ellipse. All right. If it's not a 2, then, you know, in this case, you got to ask yourself something. Let me back up. If it's a 2, we should draw an ellipse. But why are we bothering to check if it's a 1 if we already know up here? If we already determined it's a 2, why would we bother checking to see if it's a 1? Because we know that's not going to be true. So really, the correct way to do this is to use this kind of idea of else, but Python, but, but have another, it's a, a special kind of else. It's a combination of else, of else and if. So if we check to see if this is a 2, we can draw the ellipse. If that is false, then we can check another thing. This is all all I'm trying to get get at here. <laughs> it's called a chained conditional. We can check if this is equal to 2, 
we draw the ellipse. If that's not equal to 2, then we can check the next thing, which is if it's equal to 1. And we will draw the x. And if we wanted, if tic-tac-toe, if this game had multiple, you know, maybe there's some new version of it where we have a triangle in there, if it's equal to 3, well, we could draw a triangle um, in there. So that's called a chain conditional. And it really makes more sense, much more sense, to anyone who's going to look at this code who's done some programming. They would look at this, and I think the first thing they would say is, well, well that's, why didn't you use an else if? It doesn't, it's not really going to make your program super efficient, you know, if you do it one way or the other. You know, this is being the more efficient way, but it's just more correct, and it just feels kind of wrong if you don't do it that way. Okay, so that really leaves a lot of work to be done still with all the other positions on the game board. But that gives you a, a, a good starting point. And uh, remember, you really didn't need this. That was just my beginning point. Maybe you've already got some kind of, uh, you know, lines on the game board. I'm going to leave mine in, but uh, maybe you've got some nicer drawing at this point. But we'll leave it, we'll stop there, and... Uh, by the time you're done, you really prob you will have created nine different variables, and uh, you you will have them all controlling what's going on in the board.